What's up everyone and welcome back to the Draft Dynasty channel. I haven't been posting a lot of video lately, I've been watching a ton of NHL action, a lot of good playoff games and as most of you probably know already, I'm a Montreal Canadian fan and I have a little bit of mixed feeling right now. Yes, we beat uh, the Pittsburgh Penguin, but we can kiss goodbye to Alexis Lafreniere and it's a little bit hard to take, hard pill to swallow and not only losing Lafreniere but also losing the pick in, in the top 10 instead of going 8 or 9, we're gonna go at 16 and the gap is pretty big uh, there was at least three players that would have been really comfortable taking uh, in the top 10 and I think at least one of them would have been available at that spot now at 16 it's a bit more tricky there's gonna be more viable option and the chance of making a mistake are a little bit higher so it's a bit stressful but who knows maybe this is the year that the abs are making a deep run in the playoff but the flyers are gonna be very tough to beat uh, they might be one of the oddest team in the league I've watched all their game in the round robins and Kevin and Scott Lawton are playing some really really good hockey so they're gonna be tough to beat but I think the abs are a bit underrated we have a lot of good depth at the forward group and a, a lot of players that are good defensively so with all that plus price who knows maybe we can keep the game tight and surprise a few teams if everyone can stay healthy all right let's get back to the topic so we have here Ridley Gregg and he's gonna be in my late first round and as you can tell he is on the younger side born August 8th so it was his birthday yesterday he just turned uh, 18 and he's 5 foot 11 159 pounds so he's definitely on the weaker side physically he's got a ton of room to grow and as far as the ranking uh, people have him at a lot of different places so elite prospect have him at 83 uh, future consideration 54 uh, 24 year and 30 year so there's a big gap I think 83 is definitely a mistake and I'm gonna try to explain why um, if we take a look at his stat he finished the year with 26 goal 60 point in 56 game which is pretty good and he was not playing on a team with a lot of firepower uh, he was not surrounded with elite player around him but he was one of the best player offensively on that team and if we look in the past year uh, he always produced pretty well uh, even in uh, major AAA year and last year as well for his uh, first year in the WHL he did pretty well and with young player like him born in August he's almost 10 month younger than other prospects in a draft I like to pay close attention toward the end of the year if we're seeing big improvement and with him it's the case if you look all his game toward the end uh, he was starting to produce a lot more so I think the last 20 game he was at around 30 point so around 1.5 point per game and even the shot on goal you can see five shots seven shot three five four six so he was starting to put a lot more shot on goal and more goal as well so you can tell that uh, he was starting to eat up towards the end of the year and we've seen it last year with a guy like Nick Robertson he was one of the youngest player in the draft and he finished the year pretty strong and with those younger player you need to be careful because it's possible that they have a huge year in their draft plus one the year after the draft and it could be the case as well with a guy like Ridley Gregg he's born in August and he was finishing the year at a pretty strong pace 1.5 points per game so it's possible that he has a huge year next year and uh, people are gonna say whoa why, why did we miss on him uh, if he drops too much in the draft all right so let's start with the clips and you're gonna be looking at number 17 and the thing I like the most about his game yes he is only 160 pounds but he plays much bigger than that he's the type of guy that's gonna be always in your face annoying to play against he's got a great motor high intensity he never quits and now that I've been watching a lot of playoff hockey I really want to target those guys that are gonna be hard to play against in playoff high intensity uh, ideally you want to target a guy that can bring a lot of a lot of toughness but the thing is those guys don't exist anymore guys like Tom Wilson they're so hard to find they're like unicorn you cannot get them the most of the guys that are big and strong physically uh, they're not gonna be good enough skater not enough skills really to get significant minute uh, on the ice so you have to settle down and go for player that has the motor the intensity the passion guys like Matthew Kitschuk or even Brendan Gallagher uh, those type of guy when you need to win a, f a series they're gonna be mentally 
hard to play against because they're always in your face laughing they're never gonna back down and in the end they're gonna drain you a lot of energy because they're just never gonna stop and just take a look at that fight like i said earlier he's small but he plays pretty big and he's not scared to drop the mid and i think that's the first time ever i saw that during a hockey game a double ko and after that uh, the cameraman zoom on him uh, on the penalty bench and he was laughing uh, that's just the type of player he is here's another example he's gonna take the hit at the blue line and it's a lot of fun to give it but sometimes you just have to receive them to finish up your play and this is what he did multiple times during his own exit as well he was taking the hit to finish up the play and he's one of the very few player in this draft that once the physicality increased during a game seems like he elevate his play the more you start to hit him the better he's playing and especially in those games versus uh, Prince Raiders it, it was very physical and he was able to reach another level in those games so that's why I'm saying is the kind of player I want to target especially for playoff hockey here is another example of him taking the hit in the corner and making the zone exit and he's gonna get drilled by uh, Nagbauer who's probably 50 pound heavier than him and just look how he's gonna answer uh, some pretty nasty stick handling so uh, not only he's got the intensity level but he's got some pretty nice ability overall and speaking of his individual ability, uh, there's nothing really elite. So he's kind of the jack of all trade. He can do everything well, but nothing great. So I think this is one of the reasons why some people are much lower on him. It's hard to give him a high ceiling in terms of projection because there's nothing he's doing very high-end. And even for myself at the Helenka Gretzky, the first five or six game I've watched in league play, uh, I didn't really understand the hype around him. I was not overly impressed. Uh, he doesn't have the wow factor, but after a few games and toward the end of the year, I start really to warm up on him. And he's a pick that the team, if one team is going to pick him in the first round, they're not picking him for what he is right now. They're picking him for what he's going to be in the future. So he's not a first round talent as of right now, but if he can develop, especially physically so like we said earlier and I, I've said that in a previous video there's some player that are gonna benefit from gaining some weight getting stronger and there's other player that are not really gonna benefit from that so you cannot always look at the weight of a player oh he's young he's 160 pounds so he's gonna get a big bump in terms of uh, because he's gonna get stronger but for Ridley Greg I really think the way he's playing the game is someone that's gonna benefit a lot uh, from getting stronger he's gonna be able to really play his game effectively He's involved in so many one-on-one -on -one physical battles along the board, in front of the net. And also for his skating, he doesn't really have the super quick feet. So I think it's going to make a big difference for him to get some stronger legs. Uh, he's going to have more a more powerful stride. And especially for puck protection, he's going to be able to lower his center of gravity, protect the puck, lower his shoulder. So overall, I think for his game, getting stronger might make a world of difference. So as you can see in the previous clips, uh, you can tell that he's missing the size and the power is easy to push around and for him to be able to play his game at the next level especially he's gonna need to be much stronger otherwise it might be a problem and take a look at this clip this is one of his best clip in the game that i saw and oh my god some serious poise and stick handling and he's got a, a very solid vision i think his playmaking might be the second thing i like the most about his game but extremely patient on that play and the stick handling as well a uh, very very nice uh, assist while we keep on watching his playmaking ability, I want to make my NHL player comparison. But first, I want to compare him with one player from last year's draft. He reminds me a little bit of Jacob Pelletier. And if, if you remember, Jacob Pelletier was a player that is not doing anything elite. He's more of a jack of all trade. But on top of that, he's got a very high compete level. A very clutch player and also very strong defensively. So all in all, pretty similar player type. But for both of them, I kind of have the same question mark. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to build up their body in order to be strong enough to be able to play their game at the NHL level. Now for the NHL player comparison. Uh, for those of you that have watched the previous video on Brendan Brisson, I think I'm going to take the same exact player. So I'm going to go with Nazim Kadri again. But I think more realistically, I'm not sure he's going to be that good. I don't think he's got enough offense in this game really, Greg, to really be on that level. So I think maybe a more realistic comparison would be Sam Bennett with uh, the Calgary Flames. So unfortunately for Bennett, he never really was 
was able to reach uh, his full potential. For some reason, he kind of uh, hit his uh, ceiling really early in his career and his offensive game kind of uh, stopped uh, improving. So that would be my projection for Greg. So more of a third liner with some special units or so both the power play and the penalty killing. I think he's going to be able to play on that. And he also might be able to play the left wing and the center. I think he's a more natural center, but let's say he is drafted by a team with a lot of good center already. He's going to be able to slide on the left wing without any problem. Let's change category and take a look at his scoring ability and his shot. And like I said earlier in the video, Toward the end of the year, he was starting to shoot the puck a lot more. And this is a good sign because he's got a very good shot. Uh, like the rest of his game, there's nothing elite, like I said, but he's doing everything well. So his shot, it's the same thing. He's got a very quick and deceiving release. And he's using the flex of his stick very well. So a lot of the time, you're going to see his stick flex a lot. And this is helping him to surprise goalie sometime so with some 5 shot. And this goal was pretty sweet. So you can see with his head, he's clearly looking for a pass, looking for pass and schlink uh, he sniped that five all surprising the goalie so really nice move there shot. skating from left to right picks it up at center weaves out to the left heads towards the net slowly gets into the forehand shoots and scores in behind the defense now he has a stick lifted Reinhardt in front Greg shot scores Ridley Greg will tie it up for the week Kings here so as you can see, he's got a pretty good wrist shot. And I think most of the time when he's able to beat the goalie, it's because he's got a very quick release. So he's able to surprise the goalie with that. And his shot is pretty accurate as well on top of it. And in two or three years, once you add the strength and the size, uh, the, the shot's going to be more powerful and it's going to be a pretty deadly combo since he already has the accuracy and the quick release. This is another nice clip here. So he's going to block a shot in overtime, win the foot race, uses wrist shot for the game winning goal and for those that watched my previous video on Brendan Brisson this clip right there it's pretty much the main reason why I'm gonna have Greg ahead of Brisson and it's the skating ability Greg is not that much of a better skater than Brisson but when I'm watching him he's more effective so there's a lot more time where Greg is using his skating and doing something with his skating ability and the other reason is that he's just more involved so you've seen here the block shot the defensive play and in terms of position I would give a very big edge to Ridley Gregg, especially defensively. Uh, he's always supporting everyone on the ice, always near the puck, and his decision making defensively is way better. So he's a much more complete player, in my opinion, than Brisson. Brisson might be a bit more flashier, more creativity, maybe more high end skills, especially with the puck handling and the shooting ability. But I think uh, Gregg is a more complete player. And on top of that, you add the fact that Gregg is almost 10 months younger, he's also the same eye but 20 pound less so a lot more room to grow a lot more room overall to develop as a player anyway folks this is it for this episode i think in the next one i might do my final ranking thir top 31st i might split it in three different videos so from 31st to 20 20 to top 10 and the final one's going to be the top 10 uh, there's so many people that are asking for it so i might as well start doing it and i think it's going to be pretty long to put together so i don't want to wait too much before doing it as always, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to be posting it a bit more frequently. I know lately I've been uh, enjoying the summer a little bit and watching uh, the NHL instead of uh, doing some uh, video. But anyway, see you on the next one. Bye.